This is a copy of the first edition of Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. It is a presentation copy from Mary Shelley to Lord Byron, inscribed by Mary Shelley to him in her own hand. She's inscribed it on the flyleaf, just before the half title, to Lord Byron from the author. And we know it's her hand, we can compare it very easily to the manuscript of Frankenstein, which is now in the Bodleian Library in Oxford. It's sadly just the first volume of the book, but it's the only volume that would have been inscribed. Um, and uh, we know exactly the circumstances of how Mary Shelley gave it to Byron. The book was published on New Year's Day, 1818. Uh, it was published in an edition of 500 copies only by Lackingtons. Um, there were six copies reserved for the author for her presentation. Byron wasn't in England at the time, um, he was in Italy. And in uh, spring 1818, Mary Shelley set out to Italy with her husband and her stepsister Claire to go to Italy. And she would have taken this book with her to present to Lord Byron. Um, Byron, of course, um, had had an affair with her sister Claremont and they had an illegitimate baby, Allegra, who the Shelleys were bringing with them to try and uh, get Byron to look after her. Byron wanted nothing to do with this and so he stayed away. And so in April, Shelley sent a parcel of books to Lord Byron, uh, who was staying at Venice at the time, and the letter specifically describes this copy of the book and asks for Byron's approval of it. From Milan, Shelley wrote to Byron on the 28th of April, 1818. You will receive your packet of books Hunt sends you one he has lately published, and I am commissioned by an old friend of yours to convey Frankenstein to you, and to request that if you conjecture the name of the author, that you will regard it as a secret. In fact, it is Mrs. S's. It has met with considerable success in England, but she bids me say that she would regard your approbation as a more flattering testimony of its merit. The genesis of Frankenstein is well known. Byron was renting a villa on the shores of Lake Geneva, the Villa Diodati and the Shelleys were near neighbours in the summer of 1816. The weather was unusually bad that year and they found themselves holed up on a stormy night reading ghost stories when, according to Mary's recollection a few years later, Byron had suggested that they all tell ghost stories. And the next day, according to Polidori, Byron's physician who was also there that night, they set to work. Now, of those stories, Byron published uh, only a fragment of a vampire tale. Polidori himself wrote a story called The Vampire, which was originally published under Byron's name. But the, by far the most significant work of that evening was Frankenstein. Mary was only 18 when she wrote Frankenstein and she was just 19 when it was published in England and uh, she didn't have a great deal of money. Uh, the copy that she gave Byron is not particularly smart. It's in a simple calf binding, typical of the period. Um, it's now missing its spine. Um, the boards are decorated with a simple double gilt rule around the edges and there's some uh, a rather pretty little flower head roll around the inside of the gilt here. But um, in other respects, it's, it's not a particularly smart volume. Marbled end papers, as you would expect at this date. Um, there's only one other copy um, known of Frankenstein, which is inscribed by Mary Shelley herself. Uh, that now is in the Pierpont Morgan Library in New York. It was bought by uh, J.P. Morgan in 1916. That's uh, Mary Shelley's own copy, which she gave uh, when she was uh, leaving Italy for the last time. She uh, gave it to an English friend, uh, a woman, not a, not a literary acquaintance, just a friend who'd been kind to her. Um, and um, she seems to have uh, perhaps wanted to leave it behind. Um, that's the only other um, inscribed copy uh, of Frankenstein that we know of. Um, and uh, the interest, the associational interest of this copy far outweighs, uh, in our opinion, that copy. As for the provenance of the volume, well, um, Byron's library was dispersed uh, after his death in um, slightly messy circumstances. Byron, of course, died in Greece, fighting for Greek independence, died of marsh fever, and um, his uh, executor was John Murray, the second John Murray, his publisher. 
This book um, was found in the uh, estate of Douglas Lord Jay, who was an influential uh, Labour politician, by his grandson, who was sorting out his papers. The book was simply sitting there on the shelves among his other papers with no great fanfare. Um, uh, the only th connection that we can make is that um, Lord Jay was a very good friend of Jock Murray, who is John Murray VI, who is uh, a descendant, or uh, was a descendant of uh, the second John Murray, Byron's publisher. Perhaps it came that way. But he was also an enthusiastic Byron collector and uh, friends with several influential Byron critics. So we can only suppose how this volume has survived.